Ladies and gentlemen, COP26 begins in Glasgow tomorrow. Quite literally, it is the last chance saloon. And we know that this COP, COP26, is our last best hope. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Good morning, everybody. This is Steve Fletcher with the Trumpet for My People. Today is November 1st, 2021. I wanted to start today's uh, message with that clip that I shared yesterday. They are talking about COP26 as the last chance, as the last hope, as the last call, and what the Bible says, maybe the last trump. Okay. Now, we are seeing this time frame that Everyone, okay, all of the world leaders have left Italy and have headed to Glasgow, Glasgow now. And the COP26 is actually in partnership with Italy. Okay, so everything that took place between the G20 summit on October 30th and October 31st, all of the world leaders that were in Rome have now headed over to Glasgow and they're going to be there for 13 days okay from October 31st to November 12th today is the second day meetings started yesterday last night in Glasgow and they're going to be running through November uh, 12th okay now we are at such a critical moment Okay, as we are watching all of the signs, trying to understand what the what the world leaders are doing, what uh, you know, what is happening, where we are, how long um, we still have to be here, um, when will the revealing take place? And I think this is what we have come to: is they are showing, okay, that Barack Obama is going to be in uh, Glasgow with all of the world leaders. And one of the articles says Obama returns to the world stage. Okay. So is there going to be some type of a revealing that is taking place? And this is what we want to focus on. This is what I want to focus on. I know, I mean, right now we could look at November 1st and try to figure out is today the day. We could look at November 2nd. We could look at each of these days. I mean, we, we've got uh, November 9th, which is 119. We've got November 11th, which if November is the 9th month and the 11th day, I mean, we've got all of these different types of connections that we could look at, but then we've got the bigger picture. And so what I want to do today is I want to look at this bigger picture of where we are right now, what is going to be happening during the COP26? When when is the revealing? I'm I'm hoping I'm hoping we can narrow down when this revealing event is going to take place. Okay. When will the revealing take place? When will the manifestation take place? And this should be the time of our escape. I'm hoping that on or before this manifestation which I see is quite possibly and quite probably a simultaneous event. As Satan is getting thrown out of heaven, he's coming down to earth, he's, Satan comes down to earth, woe on earth, rejoicing in heaven, because Satan has come down to earth with great wrath, knowing he has a short time. Okay, this is the incarnation event of the Antichrist. And this is the beginning. This would be the beginning of the Great Tribulation. Hell on earth. Satan himself in a host body on earth. Okay. Now, they're calling this the last best chance. All right. 
World leaders meet for last best chance. COP26 climate talks in Glasgow. Okay, it goes on to say around 120 world leaders and thousands of delegates. Okay, this is a huge event. This is a huge event, okay? 120 world leaders. Now, we've talked about the number 120 and how important that is. 120 in the upper room on the day of Pentecost, the fire fell, right? 120 years that God had ordained for man. His days shall be 120 years. My spirit will not contend with man forever. Okay, the number 120 is so important biblically. Okay, especially at the end of at the end of the ministry of Jesus Christ and the beginning of the new age, the age of the church, it was the 120. And now we have what could be marking the end of this age of grace. In the time of the Antichrist, the Great Tribulation, and we have this number appearing again, 120. Around 120 world leaders and thousands of delegates are attending the COP26 climate talks in Glasgow, Scotland, following the G20 Leader Summit in Rome, Italy. Okay, U.S. President Joe Biden, U.K. Prime Minister Boris Johnson, and Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi are among leaders who will speak today. Okay, this article was written November 1st. So the, 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 the talks have begun, the information has begun, the meetings are going on right now. China's Xi Jinping and Russia's Vladimir Putin are skipping the conference. Okay, China and Russia are not there. Okay, could this be this conflict that is taking place between the world powers? China doesn't want to be involved. Russia doesn't want to be involved. What, you know, what is that a key part of this? All of these things we need to consider as we're watching what is happening in uh, Glasgow, Scotland. UK lawmaker Alok Sharma is chairing the summit. And they're focusing on keeping 1.5 alive and talking about the, the uh, temperature of the earth, okay? You know that the Climate Change Summit is connected to the Georgia Guidestones because the Georgia Guidestones first, um, if we look this up, okay, the, the uh, Climate Summit, okay, and Climate Change, the Climate Change Focus, I think most connects with the Georgia Guidestones depopulation agenda because the first commandment of the Georgia Guidestones is maintain humanity under 500 million people in perpetual balance with nature. Okay. Remember just a couple days ago, Boris Johnson said we should feed people to the animals to balance out nature. Okay. Well, this is all part of this whole uh, agenda to keep humanity in balance with nature, climate change. Okay, and it's the deep population of the earth is what they are planning. Okay, this is the reality of what they are doing. Okay, they are planning the depopulation okay, of the earth. And a report published by the UN in August called A Code Red for Humanity showed that the world is warming faster than scientists previously thought. Code Red for Humanity, last best chance, okay? Now, Obama will focus on connecting with young activists while attending COP26. Okay, let's read what is happening and why is Barack Obama even going to this uh, event. Barack Obama is attending the big climate conference in Glasgow to try to convince the world that America is more about President Biden than former President Trump at least when it comes to fighting climate change, and at least when you judge the country as a whole, and not just what's going on in Washington, where the president's climate agenda just took a major cut in Congress. It's an extremely unusual appearance by a former president at a world leaders event, but Obama aides and friends tell CNN the former president wants to help Biden win back world faith in American leadership on this issue and get the global alliance back on track after four years of Trump. Obama has a global 
following. Okay, let's listen to what they're saying about Obama's global following. Obama has a global following, said John Podesta, who worked on climate issues in the Obama White House and remains in touch with the former president. Poll after poll show young people in particular are despairing of whether democracy can work, whether politicians are up to the task. They see Obama as inspirational and who tells it like it is. Obama's present at the, presence at the COP26 summit began with suggestions from climate activists, but it really took shape in conversation with John Kerry, his former Secretary of State and Biden's special presidential envoy for climate. People familiar with the, with, with the conversations tell CNN. The White House was eager for the help, officials said, requesting anonymity to discuss, to discuss the behind-the-scenes conversations. Still, Obama's trip does not just reflect an acknowledgement in the, in the Biden White House and beyond of how much international faith in America declined during the Trump years. It also reflects an awareness of how much more Obama connects with people globally, even now as a former president, than Biden does as the president actually in the Oval Office. Okay, So they're using this term repeatedly when it comes to Obama, okay? Obama has a global following. Obama connects with people globally, okay? Even when Obama was at his most popular in America, he was always much more popular overseas. With his election seeming symbolic of the world superpower embracing internationalism and a new forward-looking generation, okay? A new world era under the leadership of Barack Obama. Obama remains the inspiring figure around the globe. Okay, again, this inspiration, a global inspiration. This is the way that Obama is being portrayed. And this is the way he is being seen across the globe. Obama is an inspiring figure around the globe. This is what they want us to believe. Okay. And the spirit of the Antichrist definitely has taken root, whether it's directly towards Satan himself or Barack Obama. It's the spirit of Antichrist that is taking over uh, the world mindset. Obama remains the inspiring figure around the globe, particularly, particularly with the young people to which he will dedicate much of his time while in Scotland. In coordination with his own foundation and Columbia University's Climate School, he will host a roundtable with young activists, including many who are alumni of his global fellowship programs, and urge business leaders to accelerate their own clean energy investments. A State Department official called Obama among our strongest global advocates for action, adding that he'll be a welcome voice in describing the rare tag team approach for two presidents. Okay, so how many times did they use the term globe? Four times at least here. Obama has a global following. Obama connects with people globally. Obama remains the inspiring figure around the globe. And Obama is our strongest global advocate for action. Okay, so we have all of this. Now, I put together a piece of information here. Okay, I put together this piece of information. Now, um, I want to consider what we are, where we are exactly, and why they chose these dates to be at this conference. Okay, first of all, everything kicks off on Halloween, and we know that that is the most satanic day of the year, okay? Halloween. Between everything being in Italy, between October 30th and October 31st, exactly on October 31st, they made the shift from Italy to Glasgow and started this new conference, which is going to be going for 13 days. Okay. Now, the first thing I want to show you is the number 13 as far as occult holidays and Sabbaths. 
uh, as we have repeatedly stated, the Satanists believes that numbers contain inherent power. Thus, they literally order their lives by occult numerology. Such numerology also is a key component in astrology, another system of divi divining that Satanists observe very closely. The occult calendar is divided into four segments of 13 weeks each. The number 13 is considered divine by the occultist for a couple of reasons. The Bible assigns 13 the meaning of rebellion against constituted authority, plus the depravity that caused Satan to rebel against God. The occultist assigns 6 to represent the number of man, and the number 7 to represent the number of divine perfection. Thus, as a, as a person climbs that Jacob's ladder towards self-perfection in the realm of the occult, the number 13 represents the state of divine perfection, self-achieved perfection, and illumination. 6 plus 7 is 13. Okay, So all of this is going to be kicking off. On October 31st, Samhain, also known as Halloween or All Hallows Eve, this date is the Illuminati's highest day of human sacrifice. Okay. Now, the other thing I want to show you is that if we look at the fall season from September 21st to December 21st, from equinox to equinox and the middle of the fall season, okay, we're going to see that September 21st plus 40 days is October 31st. Then we have the 13 days of their conference from October 31st to November 12th. And then we have from November 12th inclusive to December 21st is another 40 days. Okay, so what we're seeing then, beyond the fact that they've chosen 13 days starting on Halloween, these 13 days are the exact middle of the fall season. These are the exact middle days of this fall season. Okay. Now, this could be considered some type of a, a ritual with, like like Hanukkah and midweek Hanukkah, and we have the, the menorah, and we have the middle candle on the menorah, okay? And they have some, for some reason, they have chosen this time to be together in Glasgow at the exact middle, 13 days in the exact middle of the fall season, okay? So that I, I think that's very significant, and we're going to see how this may play out. We're just trying to watch and get all of the details and try to understand. Okay. Now, okay. Now, uh, now what I want to do is I want to go on and I want to look at between October 31st and November 12th. Let's take a look at the Strong's numbers that correspond with these days and just take a look and see how this uh, is playing out. Okay. October 31st, Halloween, Strong's 1031 is Nash, to Nash the teeth, the gnashing of the teeth, and this is uh, representative of hell itself, the gnashing of the teeth. Then November 1st, 111 is lawless. Number 2, 112, is godless. November 3, 113 is lawless again. November 4th, to do away with, to set aside. November 5th, 115, to set aside or to cancel. Okay. okay, now that we have looked up through November 5th, remember October 31st through, through November 12th is the exact middle of uh, of fall okay is the exact is the exact middle of the fall and then we have a 13 day um, event and in the 13 days if we go to the sixth day it's november 5th and november 6th is the seventh day right in the middle of this week right in the middle of this time frame okay if we go we're in the middle of the fall and we have 13 days, and we go to the middle of the 13 days, the meaning of November 5th is to set aside or to cancel. Okay? Does this connect us with the Great Reset? 
Okay, does this connect us with bring back better, build back better, okay? To do away with, to set aside, bring back better, build back better, and the great reset, okay? Well, I thought that was interesting that right in the middle of this time, this is the meaning of Strong's to set aside, to cancel, okay? Now, as we go on, I didn't see anything... Um, I didn't see anything connected by November 6th or November 7th. I didn't find any significant meaning in the Strong's that I want to share with you. But if we go on to November 8th, we're going to see that 118 is to contend or to wrestle. November 9th, which is 119, okay, could be a reverse 911. November 9th is a key day within all of this. In, in the Hebrew, 119 is red, and in the Greek, 119 is contest, okay? To contend, to wrestle, we have a contest. We have red, the color of blood, okay? November 10th, 1110 is to lay waste. November 11th, 1111 is devastator, okay? All right, and November 12th, the last day, okay, the last day of this meeting here, Strong's 1112 in the Hebrew is Belshazzar, king of Babylon. This is revealed in Daniel chapter 8, okay. All right. So let's take a look at what is revealed in Daniel chapter 8 about Belshazzar, king of Babylon. This is the last day of the conference. Is this a, is this a, a revealing uh, moment, the last day of the conference? Let us consider what uh, all of this means here. Okay, Daniel chapter 8, Belshazzar. In the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar, a vision appeared unto me, even unto me, Daniel, after that which appeared unto me at the first. Then we go on to verse 8. It says, Therefore the he-goat waxed very great. And when he was strong, the great horn was broken. And for it came up four notable ones toward the four winds of heaven. And out of them, out of one of them, came forth a little horn. Okay, now... Look at look at how this is all playing out. November 12th is the last day of this conference. November 12th reveals to us Belshazzar, the king of Babylon, through Strong's number 1112. And Daniel 8 is the revealing of the little horn, which is the Antichrist. Okay. So let's continue. In the third year of the reign of, Be of King Belshazzar, a vision appeared unto me, even unto me, Daniel, after that which appeared unto me at the first. Therefore the he-goat waxed very great, and when he was strong, the great horn was broken, and for it came up, and for it came up four notable ones toward the four winds of heaven. And out of one of them came forth a little horn, which waxed exceeding great, toward the south and toward the east and toward the pleasant land. And it waxed great, even to the host of heaven. And it cast down some of the host and of the stars to the ground and stamped upon them. Yea, he magnified himself even to the prince of the host, and by him the daily sacrifice was taken away and the place of the sanctuary was cast down. Okay. He is magnified to be the prince of the host. Okay. Obama is being brought to COP26 to connect globally with the world. Okay. He's being magnified to be the prince of the host. Yea, he magnified himself even to the prince of the host, and by him the daily sacrifice was taken away, and the place of the sanctuary was cast down. And a host was given him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression. And it cast down the truth to the ground, and it practiced and prospered. 
Then I heard one saint speaking, and another saint said unto that certain saint which spake, How long shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot? And he said unto me, Unto two thousand three hundred days, then the sanctuary shall be cleansed. Okay. Now, we just watched this a couple days ago that October 31st, the first day of this conference, okay, was exactly 2,300 days from the Iran nuclear agreement that took place on July 14th, 2015. Okay. 2,300 days from a host being given unto him through six countries and the United, uh, the European Union alliance was connected to the Iran nuclear agreement. And what does it say? A host was given him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression. And then uh, they asked the question, how long shall be the vision be concerning the daily sacrifice? He said unto me, 2,300 days, then the sanctuary shall be cleansed. So from the beginning of this conference, going back 2,300 days, we have the Iran nuclear agreement. Okay, see how all of this is playing out. We just had the revelation from Daniel chapter 8 about the uh, understanding of the Iran nuclear agreement, how it's bringing us right to Halloween. Okay, and now November 12th brings us back again to Daniel chapter 8 through Strong's 1112 Belshazzar. And this brings us right to what we just studied about the 2300 days. Okay, now Let's do this now. We have another piece of information. I think you guys are going to be very uh, amazed. You're going to be very amazed at uh, what we're going to find here and how this is going to connect us with these, with where we are exactly, with what they are doing, okay, right now uh, in Glasgow between October 31st and November 12th, okay? Starting on October 31st, let's consider the Bible verses that correspond to Obama from his birth on August 4th, 1961. Okay. August 4th, 1961 to October 31st, 2021 is 22,003 days. Let me give you the information here. That from August 4th, 1961 to October 31st, 2021. The result is uh, 22,003 days. And then if we go to the New Jerusalem site and put in 22,003, it's going to give us the verse number of the day based on the number of days of Barack Obama. Now, starting at this conference, we're right in Daniel chapter 9. Okay, this is bringing us to Daniel chapter 9, the beginning of the conference, Daniel 9, 14. All right. Okay, so let's uh, let's see where this is leading us. October 31st, verse 22,003, Daniel 9, 14. Therefore hath the Lord watched upon the evil and brought it upon us. For the Lord our God is righteous in all his works, which he doeth, for we obeyed not his voice. November 1st, verse 22,004, Daniel 9:15. And now, O Lord our God, that has brought thy people forth out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand, and has gotten thee renowned as at this day we have sinned, we have done wickedly. November 2nd, verse number 22,005, Daniel 9:16. O Lord, according to all thy righteousness, I beseech thee, let thine anger and thy fury be turned away from thy city Jerusalem, thy holy mountain, because for our sins and for the iniquities of our fathers, Jerusalem and thy people are become a reproach to all that are about us. November 3rd, verse 
22006, Daniel 9, 17. Now therefore, O Lord our God, hear the prayer of thy servant and his supplications and cause thy face to shine upon thy sanctuary that is desolate for the Lord's sake. November 4th, verse 20, 2007, Daniel 9, 18. O my God, incline thine ear and hear, open thine eyes and behold our desolations and the city which is called by thy name, for we do not present our supplications before thee for our righteousness, but for thy great mercies. November 5, verse 22,008, Daniel 9, 19. O Lord, hear, O Lord, forgive, O Lord, hearken and do, defer not for thine own sake, O my God, for thy city and thy people are called by thy name. November 6, verse 22,009, Daniel 9, 20. And while I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of God. November 7th, verse 22,010, Daniel 9, 21. Yea, while I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. November 8th. See how we're coming right up to the, the prophecy of Daniel's 70 weeks? Right in the middle of this, uh, right in the middle of this conference is the exact timing of Daniel's 70 weeks. November 8th, verse 22,000. 11, Daniel 9, 22. And he informed me and talked with me and said, O Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. November 9th, verse 22,012, Daniel 9, 23. At the beginning of thy supplications, the commandment came forth, and I am come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved. Therefore, understand the matter and consider the vision. November 10th, okay? We only have two more days of this conference, three more days, November 10th, November 11th, and November 12th. We have just come up to Daniel 9:24 on November 10th, verse number 22,013. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the Most Holy. November 11th, verse 22,014, Daniel 9:25. Know therefore, and understand, that from the going forth of the commandment, to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince shall be seven weeks, three score and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. Okay, Daniel 9.25. Now we have come up to the last day of the conference. This is the last day of the conference, November 12th. Okay, look at the verse of the day. For Barack Obama, from the day of his birth, November 12th, the last day of the COP26 conference, Daniel 9.26, verse number 22,015. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with the flood, and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. Okay. November 12th, 1112, Belshazzar, king of Babylon, and it connects us with verse number 22,015, Daniel 9:26. After three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off. The Messiah being cut off on November 12th. Okay. Not for himself. The people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end thereof shall be with a flood. And unto the end of the war desolations are determined. Okay. Now, 
let us continue because Daniel 9.27 is another amazing part of this revelation. Now, before we go on, I want to show you Strong's 11.13 is also Belshazzar, but this is Belshazzar from Daniel 5 and 7. Let me take you to the Strong's. Okay, let me let me take you to the Strong's uh, 1112 and show you that this is Belishatstar, Belishatstar from Daniel 8. And the name is Belshazzar, 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 okay? Now, if we go up one, notice there's going to be a slight difference in uh, 1113. Belashat star and 1113 is Belashat star. Belshat star. 1112 is Belashat star. And it shows us Daniel chapter 8. And, and 1113 is Belshat star. Also, Belshazzar, but this is Daniel chapter 5, okay? Daniel chapter 5 and Daniel chapter 7. They're both in the book of Daniel. They're both uh, kings of Babylon, okay? And um, it, this is connecting us to Strong's 1112 and 1113, all right? So let's uh, take a look at Strong's 1113, Belshazzar brings us to Daniel 5 and 7. Now in Daniel chapter 5, it's the revelation of the handwriting on the wall. Then was the part of the hand sent from him, and this writing was written. And this is the writing that was written. Many, many, tekel, a parson. This is the interpretation of the thing. Many, God hath numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Tekel, thou art weighed in the balances and art found wanting. Perez, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. Then commanded Belshazzar, and they clothed Daniel with scarlet and put a chain of gold about his neck and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. In that night was Belshazzar, the king of the Chaldeans, slain. Okay. Now, that night Belshazzar, with the king of the Chaldeans, was slain. Remember November 12th? The Messiah being cut off. Okay. And November 13th connects us with it connects us with the story of Belshazzar. And Belshazzar, in the night of the writing on the wall, died that very night. Okay. Now, ver November 13th is verse 22,016, Daniel 9:27. Okay. So, let us continue. At the end of the conference, just as the conference is ending, on November 13th, the day after, okay, this is the verse of the day for, for November 13th. He shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation. And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Okay, let us consider that we have a week-long covenant that is going to be made an actual week, okay, starting on November 13th. Let us just consider this and see what happens, okay? So we have a week-long covenant, one week, from November 13th to November 20th. We have a midweek abomination. She confirmed the covenant with many for one week. In the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease for the overspreading of abominations. We have one week. Then we have a midweek abomination, which would be November 16th or 17th. And Strong's 1116 and 
Strong's 1117 are both Obama. Okay. The midweek abomination lining up with the name Obama, which means a high place, lightning from the heights, Barack Obama, on November 16th and November 17th. 1116, Bama, a high place. 1117, Bama, a high place. Okay. Both of these dates are connected with Barack Obama. November 16th, we have one week from November 13th through November 20th. We have a midweek abomination. It connects us with the days of Barack Obama, high place. Lightning from the heights, Barack Obama. This is the day of Barack Obama right here. Now, I want to show you how we can confirm this. What day did Barack Obama release his book last year? A Promised Land. November 17th. 2020. This is his day. This is the day that is set aside for Bama. Okay. When we were watching the uh, Revelation 12 sign, we saw that from the abomination event, March 22nd, 2013. 1335 days brought us to November 16th and November 17th, 2016. And it was the exact day that Jupiter was entering Virgo. And the Revelation 12 sign was beginning. Okay, This was the beginning of the Revelation 12 sign. November 16th, November 17th, 2016. And here we have this revelation of everything they're doing. He, he's, he's right now at the world stage again. He's the one that's going to get everybody going globally. When is the revelation going to be taking place? We need to watch this week. We need to watch these 13 days. We need to watch what's going to be happening, what agreements they're going to be making. But there is no doubt that they are planning the final depopulation of the earth. The Great Tribulation is going to be kicking off with this manifestation and revealing event that is going to be happening very, very soon. Okay. And this is what we I think we need to be watching for. This is the information that I wanted to share with you today. Let us remain vigilant from now through the end of this conference. And if we're still here after November 12th, let us remember that November 13th brings us exactly to Daniel 9.27. Okay. A covenant okay November 12th said the Messiah is cut off November 12th said that the Messiah will be cut off maybe this is the head wound day okay maybe this is the head wound day and then three or four days later from November 13th through November 20th, three or four days later, we have our midweek abomination and the resurrection of Barack Obama on his day, Obama, November 16th, November 17th. Okay, this is the promised land that Barack Obama is trying to bring to the world. On November 16th, November 17th. I think these will, would end up being the key day in all of this. But we're going to continue to watch. We're going to continue to share with you the signs that we see. But when is the revelation and the manifestation going to be taking place? This is what we need to be watching for. This is the information that I'm sharing with you today. I pray you are blessed. This is Steve Fletcher with the trumpet for my people. The sign of his coming revealed.